welcome to the Faculty of Science webinar. Um, welcome to prospective learners and parents uh, who have joined us this evening. And uh, my name is Zeni Chentu and I'm the Deputy Dean in the Faculty of Science. Uh, throughout the program, you'll be able to interact with us uh, through the chat space. So feel free to pose your questions and we'll answer them. Uh, in real time and uh, just how the program will unfold we'll have a welcome from our dean professor moronga followed by the directors of school who will share information on the programs in the faculty and uh, activities within the departments with respect to academic programs as well as a coordinator of extended studies in the bsc who will also share some information there and we'll end with some social media pages that you can note of and follow uh, what the faculty does. So without further ado, I will uh, uh, allow our Dean to, to do the welcome, but uh, continue to pose your questions on the chat uh, as we go through the program. Thank you and welcome again to the Faculty of Science webinar. Welcome to this webinar organized by the Faculty of Science at Nelson Mandela University. I want to welcome you all, including the parents who are watching. Uh, feel free to write down notes during the presentation so that you can ask questions later. At the Faculty of Science at Nelson Mandela University, we want to produce graduates who are critical thinkers, we want graduates who will be able to solve problems facing South Africa, including the continent Africa itself as well. Good day, I'm André Venter, Head of the Physics Department at the Nelson Mandela University. Our department has a rich history and is regarded as one of the leading physics departments in the country with strong local and international collaborations. The science faculty strives to educate and develop students of the future. Modern facilities and ultra-modern equipment combined with the skill and knowledge of highly educated lecturers create the perfect environment for prospective students to enhance their interest and polish their skills. Our students, to the best of my knowledge, are very happy with the uh, research studies that they've engaged in and I am sure that they appreciate the quality not only of our equipment, but also the quality of our training. The faculty provides interesting studies in a variety of disciplines. To highlight some of the exciting areas, let's look at work within such fields as laser and nanophysics, or perhaps the fascinating world of the electron microscope. Studying materials and specimens at a level of one atom is extremely rewarding and helps to understand how things work and moreover, how we can apply that knowledge to the development of new inventions. The physics department at NMU has collaborations with many overseas institutions from Russia, China, Japan, to Europe, to the United Kingdom and to the USA. If you study here at NMU, you will be able to work also at the institutions overseas. Nanophysics is very important field of study. This will enable South Africa to establish high-tech industries, which is essential for economic development. An additional field of study in the sciences faculty is the area of communications, or more specifically, the field of fiber optic communications. Essentially, the, the technology that we uh, research in it enables extremely high-speed inter internet connections, um, enabling applications such as streaming voice, streaming video. All of these applications uh, rely on, on our technology. This exciting sphere of modern science and communications can lead to very lucrative jobs in the international communications field. There's opportunity for our students to, to visit overseas and spend time overseas. 
and this exciting uh, opportunity to work with scientists from around the world, learn about different cultures and have different experiences as a scientist and, and as a person. Science is an integrated study with various specialties. Although we can research all new fields of development, most will not function without power. And our next area of study involves the field of alternative power, such as solar energy and solar heating. Term one needs to look rather at what contribution can solar make, not to replace the um, existing fossil fuel power stations, but certainly to augment and to um, contribute to, to the energy mix. This specific study researches the use of the sun to provide electricity via solar panels and the development of new equipment and materials within this industry. A further section of study relates to the capturing, concentration and storage of heat from the sun. With the current global crisis in the energy field as well as the depletion of fossil fuels, a qualification in this field can lead to international research as well as development positions at large corporations. Such a vast range of studies in one faculty. Is this the right field of study for you? I believe that people should study what's uh, interesting to them and what, what fascinates them and uh, this is what physics is all about. It's about understanding how the universe works. Uh, everything from the smallest atom to, to the largest galaxy. And to, to have a job that you enjoy and that, that brings you satisfaction. This is one of the greatest uh, achievements you, you can have in life or one of the greatest paths to, to follow. We would love to assist you and trust that you will one day find an academic home in this dynamic department. Hi, my name is Dr. Bui Swatlangote. I'm the acting director for the School of Biomolecular and Chemical Sciences. Our school consists of three departments, biochemistry and microbiology, chemistry and human physiology. First, let's look at the department of biochemistry and microbiology. Biochemistry is the study of the living cell in terms of the laws of chemistry and physics. Biochemists interpret the equations of life by experimenting on the influence of chemical reactions within the cell and sometimes looking at the whole organism. While microbiology studies the world of organisms that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. The effect they have in nature, the effect on humans, animals and plants, and their ability to make physical and chemical changes in our environment. So, in order to study biochemistry and microbiology at Nelson Mandela University in the BSc program, one will need to pass all the chemistry first year modules. And the reason is that biochemistry and microbiology are only offered from year two of the BSc program. What are the careers in biochemistry and microbes? One can find themselves in medical research field, agriculture, food industry, nutritional research, as well as academic research. Now let's look at the Department of Human Physiology. Human physiology is the science of how the human body functions. It involves the study of all mechanical and chemical bodily processes to understand its responses in health and disease. You can see here different human body parts. As mentioned with biochem and microbes, Physiology is also offered from second year. There are prerequisites, chemistry one or zoology one. Human physiology is the foundation for careers in medical sciences, forensic science, medical engineering, 
or research, academic and industrial. Now lastly, let's look at the Department of Chemistry. Now what is chemistry? It is the study of composition, properties and reactions of matter. Within the chemistry department, there are also diploma programs that are being offered. I will explain those just now. The BSc degree with a major in chemistry consists of the following modules from year one to up to three. So in order to get your qualification with the BSc as chemistry major, you need to achieve all these three levels. As mentioned earlier, Chemistry 1 modules are critical if one wants to take on biochemistry or microbiology or human physiology. What are the careers if you hold the BSc in chemistry? Production chemist, can be a teacher or lecturer. If you're taking on the school teacher route, then one needs to do teaching methods from the Faculty of Education. You can also find yourself as an environmental scientist or sales representative. Now, looking at the diploma programs that are hosted, within the, hosted between the chemistry department, we first look at the diploma in analytical chemistry. Analytical chemistry diploma focuses on analytical techniques as well as analytical skills. So it is less on theory of chemistry disciplines because it is more practical and hands-on diploma. The following are the careers if one holds a qualification in analytical chemistry. Can be an industry where you do analysis, method development and validation, or you can be sales and marketing rep of chemical products and instruments, or you can work at forensic department. The last Diploma in chemical is uh, the last diploma in chemistry is the diploma in chemical process technology, and this diploma focuses on the processes of technology, chemistry, equipment, operation, and control. As you can see here from the pictures, these are more industrial-based processes. So the industries involve gas, gas and oil refining, refinery of minerals and fine chemicals. So if you want to do diploma in just chemistry, you can look at these three programs or you can choose BSc and major in chemistry. The following are website, websites addresses for the science faculty, as well as our schools. I thank you. Welcome to the School of Computing Sciences, Mathematics, Physics and Statistics. I am Dr. Jake Smeritz, the acting director of the school. Professor Jean Greiling is the head of Department of Computer Sciences. Dr. Willard Mbava of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics, Prof. Andre Fente for Physics, and Dr. Warren Brattany for Statistics. The school has programs at the undergraduate level, postgraduate level, all the way up to the PhD level. There are specifically three BSc programs uh, offered in our school, the Bachelor of Science BSc General, 
which is offered across all schools, and the variety of choices are possible. The BSc Computer Science is actually a degree in which one can major, that is, take the subjects up to the third year level in any two of the following computer science, mathematics, applied mathematics, physics, or statistics. Uh, the name there may be misleading, but it is just taken because computer science is the first uh, in a very long list. But please note that this degree has two compulsory modules in the first year, so all students in enrolled year must do Mathematics 1A and 1B in their first year. Lastly, we have the Bachelor of Science in Physical uh, uh, Science and Mathematics. Uh, the compulsory modules in the first year is Chemistry, uh, Computer Science and Information Systems, Mathematics and Physics. I now move on to introducing the departments specifically, starting with Computing Sciences. Computing Science is the world today. There is almost no job you can do these days without having some degree of computer skills. Computer skills to varying degrees are given to every student and this department is central to this endeavor. Everyone is talking about the fourth industrial revolution or 4IR, as it is commonly known. Uh, now, 4IR shouldn't make you afraid about all the jobs that will be made redundant. It should make you excited about all the new jobs and opportunities for exciting initiatives. Especially if you choose a career in our field. Other schools train students for 4IR in computer science, we skill our students so that they can invent the next 4IR. Students with a degree in computer science can travel the world and work anywhere. Yeah, some post from some postgraduate students attending a conference with their lecturers. The department create an awareness of how 4IR technologies, particularly artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science have been applied to tackle issues of sustainability in organizations and cities. We perform outreach training, coding workshops, and awareness activities to school learners in disadvantaged areas that do not have access to technologies and to address potential misperceptions of these technologies. We educate participants on innovative digital transformations and the potential they have to offer. We provide participants with the necessary skills to appropriately analyze sustainability issues and to design innovative solutions. The school also offer modules to the BCom students. The core computer science modules is very much the same and there's very little difference between the BSc and the BCom uh, uh, fundamental computer science modules. These are some of the companies where our students work.
the physics department. We need to understand our world, our universe, to overcome the challenges we face and to advance the human race. Physics is a subject. As a subject, develop the theories to understand these challenges and address them. We strive to provide our students with a thorough understanding of the fundamental principles of the subject. You can see that some of the uh, graduate attributes and skills of a, uh, a physics student, good experimental skills, critical thinker, but also be a self-starter must be skilled in mathematical modeling, etc. The undergraduate curriculum covers the following fields. And also the, the BSc Honors curriculum, where we have quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, solid state physics, and statistical physics. Our postgraduate research and training facilities uh, provide cutting edge research opportunities in the following fields optical fiber communication, semiconductor materials and nanostructures, renewable energy, and electron microscopy. The optical, optical fiber research unit, the main goal of, of this research unit is to study the optical characteristics of optical fibers and cables in high speed telecommunication network with the emphasis placed on the assessment of polarization uh, node dis dispersion or PMD, a defect resulting in dispersion of the communication signal. The group leader is Prof. Tim Gibbon. The semiconductor materials and nanostructure, this group focuses on the engineering and characterization of novel electronic materials for mainly IR and UV sensor and emitter applications. The group leader is Prof. Reinhard Puerta. This group focuses on the study of photovoltaic energy systems with a specific emphasis on factors that influence operating solar cell quantum efficiencies. The group leader is Prof. Ernest van Dijk. The Center for High Resolution Transmission Electron Microscopy or CHR-TEM is a globally recognized facility for advanced electron my, my microscopy. The facility houses four state-of-the-art electron microscopes, including the only double aberration corrected transmission electron microscope on the African continent. The group leader is Prof. Jan Nietzsche. Data is all around us. It is in the food we eat, the clothes we wear. It is even in the bus or car you, uh, that takes you to work in the morning. You find data in the health sector or even in politics. But without statistics, data is just that, data. The study of the methods and tools used to analyze present and model data in order to make predictions and decisions. It is an essential tool for financial analysts, managers, government, business industry and academics.
some of the career opportunities are quantitative and analyst, data scientist, risk analysis, uh, 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 analyst, government institutions, and of course, actuarial science. A quote from a very uh, important uh, uh, Google chief eco e economist. The sexy job in the next 10 years will be st statisticians. I'm not kidding. Mathematics plays a fundamental role in almost every aspect of our daily lives. Its applications in our society has proven key to solving many of the problems we have. Applied mathematics focus on developing the tools required to solve problems in physics, engineering, and many other fields. The department has a strong commitment to undergraduate studies and provide supplementary mathematical skills to students from many faculties within the university, such as science, engineering, commerce, education, and even law. The department offers courses at undergraduate level, postgraduate level, uh, MSc and PhD in both pure mathematics and applied mathematics. So don't worry, your problems in mathematics, mine is still greater, says Einstein. So what can you do with a mathematics degree? Well, possibly anything. But there are career opportunities with the mathematics or applied mathematics. If you are a keen problem solver, eager to make sense of even the most advanced equations, academic research is a common career path. But these are careers in business. Uh, there are careers in business, economics and banking for people with strong analytical and problem solving skills which math graduates should possess. Careers in accountancy and finance, careers in banking, uh, actuarial sciences, careers in academia and research. These are just some of the careers that we have uh, that our students uh, have received uh, from a degree in our school. If you want to change the world, join us. Thank you. Good day. I'm Professor Eileen Campbell, and I'm the Acting Director of the School of Environmental Sciences. It is my privilege to introduce you to the departments, subjects and qualifications offered in environmental sciences. Before I do that, why study environmental sciences? In the photograph on the right of the slide, you can see a pinpoint of light. That is Earth as photographed by the spacecraft Voyager 1 when it was 6 billion kilometres away. Carl Sagan aptly called Earth the pale blue dot. To us on Earth it may seem as though our world with its resources is endlessly large. 
but from space our planet appears small and fragile. Earth is the only habitable planet we know of, and it is important that we understand as much about our home as we can. In the School of Environmental Sciences, we have five departments, Agriculture and Game Ranch Management, the Department of Botany, the Geosciences Department, Zoology, and a Postgraduate Studies Department of Oceanography. In the Department of Agriculture and Game Ranch Management, we offer an undergraduate diploma in Agricultural Management. This diploma is offered both in Abeja and at George Campus. In this diploma, you will study management of livestock as well as management of crop farm farming and how to grow plants for food. Approaches cover large scale commercial farming through small scale farmers as well as subsistence farming. Game Ranch Management at undergraduate level is also a diploma. This is offered at the Tlbecha campus. In Game Ranch Management, you can learn how to manage livestock in their appropriate environment. So there will be aspects of vegetation management, resource management, as well as hunting or game guiding, all that contributes towards game ranch management. Geosciences offers two subjects towards a BSc degree. These subjects are also offered at postgraduate level. In geography, you may study aspects of remote sensing and climatology, as well as resource conservation. Geography also has human population studies, aspects of human geography. And then one of the very popular topics, integrated environmental management. Many of our students choose this as a career path. In geology, we study rocks and minerals, as well as processes that change the planet. These include small scale things such as erosion, as well as large scale aspects such as tectonic plate movement. The Department of Botany is part of the degree program and presents a subject that covers plants and algae. These are our primary producers on the planet that provide food for all other organisms. As such, the study of plants and algae can be physiological. How do they produce this organic matter on which the rest of the ecosystem relies. We call that physiology. Ecology is the study of plants, where they live and what they need in order to survive. Botany also focuses on integrated environmental management, an important career path, as I've mentioned, that many of our students choose. In zoology, you could study 
elephants, whales, all the way through to insects and crabs, and much, much more. So many alternatives that are animal related that you can study in zoology. From the very large to microscopic animals. The careers you can follow in environmental sciences, these are just some of them. Many of our students become school teachers. Others become marine biologists or manage a game farm or have an ecotourism venture in a nature reserve. You could participate in the fisheries industry with a background in marine zoology. And then, of course, there is conservation and ecotourism ventures that include being a nature reserve ranger. These are just a few of the careers. Of course, if you want to be a scientist, you can study the environment at various levels of scale, from the whole planet studies that might consider the ocean, or large-scale continental biological processes, all the way down to simple single organisms that sometimes are only a single cell in size. I showed you the planet earlier on as a view looking at Africa, highly appropriate for where we live. If you turn that planet around and look at the other side of the planet, the continents disappear and we discover a huge ocean. In fact, the ocean covers 70.8% of the planet, almost 71%. Oceanography is a complex discipline because the ocean is so large and it has no boundaries and borders. So oceanography builds on existing knowledge in postgraduate qualifications. If you want to be an oceanographer, you need to decide now what preparatory undergraduate qualification you're going to do to enable you to join oceanography in your postgraduate studies. And there are two primary alternatives. There is biological oceanography, and this photograph is of one of our professors in the Department of Zoology. If you are interested in biological oceanography, you will need to pick the biological subjects that I've spoken about today, such as botany and zoology. Those will prepare you for a higher degree in biological oceanography. to do physical oceanography, you may need to pick other undergraduate subjects such as chemistry, physics, mathematics. These are all disciplines that assist us in studying the physical ocean or the chemical ocean. So that type of choice, now is the correct time to make that type of choice. Where we are is an ideal place to study the environment, the land, the ocean, the Feinbos, the Karoo thickets. This is a good place to study environmental sciences. We welcome you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, indeed a great privilege to welcome our students to a new academic year. Welcome to the Faculty of Science. 
more specifically, welcome to the School of Natural Resource Science and Management. We are located at the George campus, which is about uh, 350 kilometers west of the main campus in Kaberga. We are located in a beautiful landscape, you know, surrounded by mountains and the coast and natural forests. And uh, there's such a great diversity of biomes and ecosystems and different forms of land use that it makes the absolute perfect open air laboratory for the offering of academic programs related to natural resource science and management. You know, obviously our students have done a lot of reading and homework before they decided uh, upon studying for uh, an academic program in natural sciences. And it's important that one keeps an eye on the media, uh, you know, regarding several developments in the world. And it is fair to say that globally, there's a much greater awareness of human reliance on ecosystem services, especially so, so soon after a pandemic and during times of hardship, you know, people become acutely aware of how much we rely on the services that nature provides for us. And there's general concern about the loss of biodiversity. People are very worried about climate change and how it relates to human health. And there's great agreement and there's genuinely major efforts in the corporate and political world, you know, to enhance more sustainable lifestyles and to change consumer behavior. And the business world needs to respond as well. You know, there's a desperate need for new business models that we can associate with a green economy. And hopefully our graduates will be the architects of, of new lifestyles, of new business models where society can benefit from, but also to the benefit of the natural world as well. And all of these challenges, you know, bring exciting new career opportunities. It brings a new economy. And there are jobs and careers out there that we haven't even thought of. And the disciplines of forestry, agriculture, and nature conservation, they are all priority in this country, but all of them are going to play a key role in future to mitigate the impacts of climate change, but also to service the well-being of society. Now, of course, you could have studied at a different location at a different university as well. Why did you select to come and study in the Southern Cape? Personally, I think it was an excellent choice because this region has got such a unique and a fantastic sense of place. You know, the Southern Cape provides the ideal open air laboratory for education and training in natural resource management and sustainability principles. You know, it is, it is a well-known fact. It is one of the regions in the world with the highest levels of biodiversity, with very complex ecological dynamics. You know, it is a, a combination of factors related to the fact that uh, we've got mountains very close to the coastline, we've got geological complexities, we've got very strong climatic gradients and a very wide diversity of biomes and different ecosystem types. And it is a common fact that it's a region with outstanding visual beauty. There's a very high demand for tourism and residential development. This is rapid economic growth and diversification from a relatively small base. But on the downside, there are significant disparities in wealth and living conditions. And all of this brings a very, very interesting case study or an interesting scenario on how to make the right choices in such a complicated environment with so many challenges. If you think in terms of the socio-ecological challenges, associated with climate change and water security. This is going to be featured very prominently in the near future. There are issues about landscape transformation, habitat fragmentation, soil degradation, and one of our major problems is the spread of alien invasive plants and inappropriate fire management. And all of these, as I've said earlier, provides the fantastic context, you know, for very innovative student assignments and seminars and discussions, you know, on what is the best way for people to interact with the environment? What are the solutions? Those solutions are going to become very, very complex. They are going to be multidisciplinary in, in nature, you know, on how to actually make 
our entire socio-ecological system more sustainable. And the NMU is serious about sustainability. If you look at the vision, the, the issue of sustainable futures feature prominently. If you look at the values, environmental stewardship is the right there. NMU takes sustainability very serious. They really value these academic programs and there is great support for our school with all its various academic programs. Specifically, our School of Natural Resource Science and Management, uh, we've got five main disciplines that we cater for. Plantation forestry, you know, this is based on industrial type uh, plantation forestry for the commercial market. Part of the same value chain, we've got wood technology, you know, focusing mainly on the, the primary processing of wood. We've got agricultural management, uh, exactly what the name says, it focuses on the management of entire systems, a very strong focus on entrepreneurship. And then nature conservation, I think it is fair to say South Africa is a world leader in the discipline of nature conservation. This mainly deals with the preservation of large natural areas, you know, for the provision of ecosystem services, but also how does man interact with nature? And how can we mitigate and minimize the negative impacts that we associate with developments? And then the last program, fire management, is quite a new one. It is the only one of its kind in the country. Uh, this deals with all the various aspects of felt fire management, you know, prevention and detection and firefighting, but also fire ecology and, you know, using fire as a management tool in natural areas. Just very quickly about our school. My name is uh, Joshua Lowe. I'm currently the director of strategic deployment. We've got three departments. Mr. Tian Poole is heading the forestry department. Professor Jan Fenter is heading nature conservation. And Mr. Johan Jordan is responsible for agricultural management. These gentlemen will be the first line of contact and the first line for communication. If you experience any challenges or if you need more information, those will be your contact people. Now, it is important to take note of the qualifications framework. On the left hand side of your screen, uh, you can see the, natural, the national qualifications framework level from levels six to 10. Remember, matric is level four. If you enter our university, you will start studying at level five. If you complete the diploma successfully, you exit at level six. Just a quick word about the diplomas. They are career orientated. That is part of our unique character. You know, they, they prepare you for a particular career in a particular discipline. And there's a lot of practical elements in the academic program. There's one year of experiential training where students spend a whole year in industry and they do wonderful things. I mean, on these little colorful photos, you can see students uh, witnessing a harvesting operation in the plantation or students experimenting with sawing patterns or doing soil surveys or vegetation analyses. It all looks like a great amount of fun to me. You know, this gives our programs practical application value and uh, they are certainly very, very popular out there in the industry. Now, after the diploma, it can be followed by an advanced diploma and that gives students the opportunity to specialize with a unique mix of different modules according to their choice and then starts the BSc Honours in Natural Resource Management. This is now most often the start of a research career. You know, it deepens your theoretical knowledge. It prepares you for research. It learn, you can learn analytical skills and research skills as well. But I always say this is not only relevant to people interested in research. It's also for middle and high level managers. You know, the analytical skills, the research techniques required to make informed decisions is also relevant in the higher end of the management domain in industry. It's important to note that on our campus, you can progress to the highest levels of academic achievement by doing an MSc and a PhD as well. And that is all research based. As far as admission requirements are concerned, I'm not going to say too much about this, but just 
take note that for the various programs, there are certain minimum admission scores required. There are other requirements around uh, required modules, and you can see the uh, minimum required cutoffs there as well in terms of academic score. So please familiarize, familiarize yourself with that. It is published on the website and in all kinds of brochures from our faculty. And then, of course, you know, being a student at a university, it's quite likely the best time of your life. It's not only about studies. It is a great opportunity to measure yourself against your peers. It's a great time to improve yourself. It's a great time to improve your framework of reference and learn new perspectives. It's not only about the in-depth knowledge about your discipline. It's also about being socially aware and being a responsible citizen. And into this phrase come things like ethical conduct and maintaining certain moral values as well. Have adaptive expertise, you know. Be able to apply your knowledge and skills in different types of contexts. Be creative and be innovative. You know, be able to apply your knowledge in such different ways that is often against the norm. And be critical thinkers. You know, be open for new ideas. Be self-aware. You know, be able to relate and to collaborate with others. You know, and uh, to exchange exchange views and be sensitive to new ideas as well. And lastly, communication skills are so important. Be able to express yourself in writing and verbally as well, because those are the desirable attributes that are currently valued in the world of work. As far as career opportunities are concerned, you know, there are such great opportunities uh, within the forestry environment, within agriculture, within nature conservation, and often there are careers cutting across these disciplines, you know, in terms of managers, in terms of researchers, biotechnologists, consultants, specialists in certain fields. Um, so this is basically a very brief overview of our school. I'm most grateful that you spent the time looking at this recording. If you want to contact me directly, you can see my email address there on the screen. Uh, I welcome you to our campus and to our school, and thank you very much for your time. Hello, prospective BSc Extended students. If you've applied for and been accepted to the BSc Extended program, I just want to explain to you a little bit more about what that is. Firstly, to introduce myself, I'm Dr. Marguerite Walton. I'm the coordinator of the BXC Extended Program. So my email address is there. If you've got any questions or queries about the Extended Program, please feel free to contact me and I will get back to you. So if you've been accepted for the BSC Extended Program, what first thing you need to know, it is a four year degree. Where the mainstream, we refer to it as mainstream BSC, is a three year degree. When you finished, when you get your degree, you have exactly the same degree as the mainstream BSc students. So there's no difference in that. The difference is it will take you four years to get your BSc extended degree. What we do is we take the first year of the mainstream BSc and we split it over two years. So we'll, you will do the first year that the mainstream students in the BSc does over two years and we're going to build in some additional support. So what we're going to do is give you some more support to make sure you're ready for the challenges of first and second year university. So what we're going to do, well, firstly, let's look at the programs you might have been accepted for. These are all the BSc extended programs we offer, biochemistry, chemistry, microbiology, and physiology extended, biological sciences extended, environmental sciences, and geosciences. Those are all the extended degrees. So check and make sure you know which one you have been accepted for. And then there's slight variances in what subjects you're going to do. In this talk, I will just give you a general idea of what to expect in the BSc extended, and we're not going to talk about specific modules that are different with all these programs. So what we're we going to do in the BSc Extended, in your first year, you will do two of your mainstream modules. 
the mainstream BSc students will do four main modules or sometimes five. But for example, botany and zoology, you will in your first year, and this could change depending on which stream you are in, but I'm using those as an example. So in the first year, you will do botany one and zoology one, where the mainstream students do botany, zoology, chemistry, and physics, for example. You will only do the botany and zoology part, but added to that, we build in additional support. And this is what the support looks like. Firstly, you will do what is called science academic skills. Now, in this module is offered by scientists, is designed for scientists. It's not generic skills that you might have learnt about in your life skills module in school. This is specifically to help you cope with university studies in a science degree. So it's made just for you to make your life easier and to support you to, so you can be comfortable in your BSc degree. You will also be doing English for Science, and there is no Shakespeare or poetry there. It is an English course offered by a scientist, designed by a scientist for science students. So, for example, you'll be helped in that module to write your reports, because for the modules you are doing, you're going to have practicals, so you're going to have to write reports, and you must be able to write a report. And what you've learned in school might not be sufficient. So, in English for Science, you're going to be taught how to write your reports nicely, how to do your references, and there's a lot of other aspects coming in. But it's made specifically for science students and offered by scientists. And then you will also do pre-calculus, a little bit more mathematics. We're not going to really repeat what you've done in school, but we'll fill in some gaps and stretch it a little bit further just to get you ready for the challenges of the year that follows. Then during your second year, you will have some more compulsory modules. Now, I already said in your first year, you'll do two of your mainstream BSc modules, so for example, botany and zoology. In your second year, you'll do the other two, for example, geography, geology, or something like that, depending on which stream you are in. Um, but you will also, in your second year, do science academic skills. You will do English for science, some more of that, and computing fundamentals. And then, after year two, you will slot in, when you, when you are doing your third year, you will slot in with the mainstream BSc students in their second year. So what we are doing, we're taking the first year of a mainstream BSc, spreading it over two years, giving you a lot of additional support just to make sure that you can cope with the challenges. So yet again, if you've got any questions, my email address, you can write it down, send me an email and I can help you and assist you with your questions. Thank you very much.